Um, to the Patriot Legend Editorial Board. Sure. As you may recall, um, we are on the record. We are videoing. No audio this time. Fred just relies on his notes. Um, we may or may not report out uh, from what you say, and I think we have a photographer coming in to take a fresh picture of you. Um, your choice, opening statement, or we can jump right in. I'll just make an opening statement just in terms of, uh, of what we've been doing and maybe I can start with uh, a little bit of, well, I'll hold off on that. Um, you know, we've had a successful four years, I believe, you know, in implementing a new government and uh, I'm proud of the work we've been able to accomplish. Uh, I think uh, we're also um, understanding that, you know, there are further challenges ahead. Uh, the economy um, is uh, at best. Uh, level, um, you know, perhaps there's a little bit of sign towards some small indications that things are moving uh, a bit. So hopefully that'll be up to. I'll, I'll, I'll remain optimistic. Um, we've reorganized our government. We've done it in a way that I think has been sensitive, uh, sensible, uh, as well as uh, strategic. Um, and uh, that's allowed us to have a strong foundation to move forward over the next four years. Um, for this campaign itself, it's been uh, a real opportunity for me. I mean, I, I pride myself on being visible, uh, so I am out and about in the community quite a bit uh, over the past four years, and I think that's important. I mean, the mayor, in many ways, the position of mayor uh, is to be uh, not only an advocate for the town, both internally and externally, uh, but also to be available and to be, in some instances, the cheerleader for the community. Um, when you when you try to in, implement a new government, there's always going to be the need to have a good level of uh, discourse and a kind of, a, or I'll say, a, a comprehensive discussion of how we try to approach, uh, you know, best approach the future for our town. So I, I do pride myself in being out and about. I've done that, I, I believe, over the last four years and hopefully will continue to do so. Particularly over these last few months, I've had the opportunity to go door to door throughout the town. I, I, I'm taking this campaign, uh, as I have in previous uh, campaigns, in a serious manner. Uh, it's important to greet the voter at the door. Uh, I think uh, that in many, many neighborhoods, we've had the traditional house parties, um, standouts are going well. So we're doing the retail politics that we need to do in terms of respecting the voter and uh, having them having them, when I say them, having the, the residents of Braintree have an opportunity to not only discuss with me what their thoughts are, but also, um, you know, have me be at their door uh, in a very authentic way to have a conversation about the future of our town. I would estimate over a thousand homes I visited throughout this campaign with uh, the week to go. Um, so I'm enjoying the, uh, the campaigning. I'm enjoying the uh, proactive approach we've taken, not only in terms of governing, but also in, uh, in asking, once again, for support and confidence. And I'll say one last thing before we maybe have some questions. I think it's really important to, uh, to earn uh, the respect of the voter, to earn their confidence, to earn their trust, uh, and to earn it every day. And so um, the approach that we've taken, you know, Peter knows this, you know, the daily mantra is, um, you know, kind of the daily mantra is to plan the work and work the plan. And I've said that repeatedly, and that's what I believe in. And we've planned the work over the last few years, and we've implemented a plan that I think has, has allowed Braintree to be better positioned. Uh, and I say this respectfully to neighboring communities, and but I think I think we're well positioned for a strong future. I believe that, and so uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue uh, with this uh, with this effort. Well, a thousand homes. I can't let it go. Go. <laughs> a thousand homes. What are people talking to you about? What's number one, number two, number three on your minds? Uh, the quality of life is important. And when I say quality of life, I define it as good schools, good public safety, good services. Um, people are noticing uh, the road improvements that we've made. We've been very aggressive. Very. Uh, we've laid out a very ambitious plan. Uh, on road uh, improvements. Branch was known for years of having an inferior infrastructure and I think over the last 
three years and again this year, now fourth year of a 100 votes program that we um, campaigned on four years ago. I said we would put together a plan. Uh, I've leaned on some of my transportation knowledge in my years in the legislature. Uh, and we put together a plan to do a comprehensive rebuilding of our roads. We have now accomplished 171 roads in four years. Now, some of them are total reconstruction, some of them are rehab, some of them are just reconditioned. Uh, but that coupled with some sidewalks, and Fred noted in the uh, paper last week that we didn't get to one sidewalk that we we're still trying. We're going to get all those buttoned up before November 25th. I think you saw, saw a crew in that neighborhood on uh, Friday. Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, people are commenting on, on, I think, the tangible improvements we've made. School buildings, we've done four of our elementary schools over, uh, two of our, both of our middle schools. Uh, we received uh, some funding with the School Building Authority. It's the first time in 30 years when last year we did over South Middle School. It was a $3 million project. First time we received state assistance uh, for one of our schools. And we did East Middle School this year, we did three other elementary schools. And so uh, four elementaries total and two middle schools, people are noticing that as well. We've hired seven teachers, while other communities have laid off teachers. Um, we've maintained our level uh, with police and fire. And so uh, what am I hearing? I'm hearing that people appreciate uh, the quality of life. Uh, I do think there are some concerns in terms of, well, we, we, we started an all-day kindergarten program, three classrooms uh, in the high school. They're kind of separated out from the high school from where the other kids are, okay? I think there, there's a sense from the young families that I speak to is whether or not we can grow that program. And I don't want to overcommit on it because I think, you know, there is that issue of sustainability, but I can tell you that we are pleased with the um, with the initial results that we've received. We have 60 young children in the program. Uh, it's a fee-based program. As a member, as mayor, I'm a member of the school committee. We've worked out on that. I take pride in the fact that I haven't missed one school committee meeting. I know a lot of mayors, and again, I don't mean this disrespect, but I'm just talking about my approach to the job, but a lot of mayors you know, push off school committee meetings. I haven't missed one of them. I've been late a couple of times, but I haven't missed one. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I treat that importantly. So what am I hearing? I'm hearing that people, there, there's a positive mood in Brain Tree. That's what I'm hearing. And, and candidly, and, and this maybe sounds bravado, but uh, people seem generally pleased that I've come to their door, and I'm pleased to be there. Um, I've lost eight pounds this campaign. <laughs> uh, so maybe I should run for a <laughs> No, you're looking good, Chaz. Um, uh, I was 186. Uh, I'm 178 today, mm -hmm. and I feel good. It's funny, sometimes when uh, we put into a story about news out of Braintree, the comments that we have, we try to gauge what concerns Braintree residents have, good. and granted the comments aren't always the best source for that. Uh, but it often seems like, uh, you say Braintree is well positioned for growth in the future, and I think about a, a, a large part of that is the commercial base that you have. And yet when you uh, see the comments we get uh, on our stories, it's that people don't want the traffic in their neighborhoods. How do you, how do you balance that? Because you need that revenue, but you want those people happy. Good question. I think we do balance it in terms of understanding that um, Braintree is a strategic location, uh, not only a, a great place to live, but also a great, a great place to do business. And so we have seen, um, and you know, we've offered some encouragement to redevelopment of properties, be it the South Shore Plaza, be it the Circuit City Building, be it the Sheridan Tower, which is now becoming a Hyatt um, across town. Uh, we've tried to look at Public Works um, um, stimulation to do the Weymouth Landing East Branch section of town. Uh, so there are a number of, uh, we had a dormant project, a housing project um, uh, that Baza had off of Maha Way, which has now become Jonathan's Landing with Pulte. It's actually, you know, you talk, it, it was a 12 building project uh, and it's reworking. The buildings were, re eight buildings, it was reduced by four buildings. More units were added because there were smaller units. But we actually took out some of the density in, uh, in the redevelopment of that property. Um, so to, to respond directly to your question, there is a balance associated with uh, bringing in the revenue streams that are needed, jobs that are needed, uh, and balancing that with the quality of life. When you do have redevelopment, you're going to have traffic. You're going to have some noise. Uh, but I think as mayor, I need to um, 
I need to be able to communicate, and I think we've, we've been able to do this rather effectively, uh, at least I hope we have, in telling people the story of why we need good quality redevelopment, how that revenue stream comes into the town and allows us to provide the level of services that we're providing, such as uh, reconstruction of our roads, building out schools, having the matching funds available, being able to hire teachers. We're not getting it from the state. We've had a reduction in local aid of over $3 million over the last three years, so that money's been lost. We did get some ARA funding, some, some federal funding through the state formula for schools specifically, but overall local aid has been lost. We just received, as you noted in your paper on Saturday, $350,000 back from the state. That's about 10% from what's been cut over the last three years, okay? Appreciate the, the gesture. We already know what we want to do with the money. Um, but in terms of having a plan in place and to be able to provide the services and to provide the public safety and the educational uh, quality that we want, we need to have these revenue streams stimulated by the private sector to uh, help us provide uh, the services uh, that residents will benefit from. So it's up to me to tell that story. And I, you know, I attempt to. I. I I do PTO meetings, uh, you know, I've done a number of you know, Knights of Columbus, Rotary Club, uh, you know, every community group that I can get in front of, uh, you know, I do. I, uh, what, I have, what's uh, an example of a, a project that you know is in the best interest of the town's future, but that is a particularly hard sell with residents? I think the redevelopment of the South Shore Plaza, at least initially, uh, there was some apprehension to it. I understand that. Nordstrom's was being added as a wing onto the residential side. Uh, but it was important. It was an important project to see uh, through. And, and I give Simon a Company, uh, which is based in Indianapolis, I give them a lot of credit in staying with it in terms of building out that project because there were some rumors flying around that Norsham Town wasn't coming, Target wasn't coming. Uh, we uh, conditioned that project uh, over 100 conditions through a very uh, detailed public hearing process back in the spring of 08 where uh, I think the mitigation amounts were about $1.3 million, $500,000 to the neighboring uh, elementary school, Clarity School, and about another $700,000 or so towards other, you know, reworking of streets, that type of thing. So there was a mitigation uh, portion of that redevelopment. It provided jobs, it provided revenue, but it, it was noisy. Uh, I can tell you that one evening in August of 08, when the demolition of George Marsh was happening, um, I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, my wife did as well, and we could hear. And we live about half a mile from the plaza, if you go, as the bird flies, about a half a mile. And, uh, you know, I went down there at 2, 3, 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, and I don't want any you know, publicity on that. I, the only reason I tell you that is that I, I, I heard the demolition going on. We did receive calls from residents who were upset with the fact that we allowed night uh, work to be done. But it was important to get that project started and uh, to, to generate the level of revenue that we, we need uh, to be able to offer the services. So as mayor, you, you, you need to have, you know, you know, what is popular is not always right and what is right is not always popular. And I understand that. And you need to make some of the decisions that others may not have, I don't mean this disrespectfully, but others may not have either all the information or they may not know kind of where the next step is. And as mayor, I need to be able to demonstrate that level of pragmatic leadership that I think we've tried to do over these past few years. I don't think anybody, well, maybe you can, because there are still some people who, you know, uh, want the old government. I mean, we hear it occasionally. Uh, but I think most people, if they're being objective, would step back and say, you know, over the last four years, we've tripled our reserves, we've reduced the operating cost of our government in terms of um, some of the fixed costs. We, we, generated some savings through collective buying on health insurance. Uh, we maintained our staffing levels for police and fire. We've added seven teachers, as I've said, to help us with classroom size issues. Young families are moving to Braintree. The, the uh, population is up. The enrollment in our schools is up. I think the bond rating has been uh, improved, while the United States bond rating actually went down. Um, I think if you, if you step, uh, step back objectively and said, here we are in January of 08 versus on the cusp of January, 2012. I think you'd have to look at that four years and say, you know, they, they're doing okay. They've made some tough decisions. When we're not, we're not an administration of importance. 
we, we try to make some tough decisions, and, and not everyone's going to agree with you, but I think we've, we've done it in a way that's been um, fair.